Portland, Oregon and Vancouver, Washington are right next to each other when you look at a map. In fact, sometimes they're only about an inch apart. But let me tell you something. They are a world apart. They're two totally separate places. Not just separated by the Columbia River, but they're separated by so much more. And when I first thought of moving up to Portland, Oregon, and I was looking for a place, people had talked about Vancouver, but it seemed like at the time they preferred Portland. Well, now I think everything has changed and people are constantly talking about Vancouver, Washington as the place to go. So what's changed? Well, in this video, we're going to do a deep dive into it and we're going to learn about why Vancouver, Washington is now one of the top number one spots chosen over Portland, Oregon when you're thinking about moving. Well, let's get started, everyone. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's Dave Baker here with your Moving to Washington team. Now, if this is your first time on the channel and you wanna know everything about what it's like to live in Vancouver, Washington, what is it like to work there? What is it like to sleep there, to eat, to play, to enjoy the beautiful outdoors of Washington? Then you've got to tap that little subscribe button and click that little bell. I am constantly talking to people about both Vancouver, Washington and Portland, Oregon. And Vancouver is becoming one of the more popular spots to go to. So if you are thinking about relocating to Vancouver, Washington, or any of the surrounding areas in Southwest Washington, you've got to reach out. You can send me an email. You can send a text message. Give us a call on the phone 24 seven. If you want to schedule a time that's good for you, no problem. Click that link below and get on the schedule so that the team can help you plan your move to Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver, Washington is a place that I'm hearing people talk about more and more and more. And I know why. I actually recently just went up there again just to go hiking in the neighborhood. And I definitely know why Vancouver is becoming an even more popular place. So in this video, I want to talk to you about some of the things that I've seen, some of what I'm hearing, and just give you some more information so you can decide, is Vancouver really where you want to move? Now, if you're thinking about moving to Portland, Oregon, of course, you can still reach out and the team is still happy to help you. I mean, like I said, they're just across the river from each other. But you might now be considering Vancouver, Washington. And I know why. There are so many things that have changed there. Now, like I mentioned before, they are only separated by a river. Portland, Oregon and Vancouver, Washington are separated just by the Columbia River. There are two bridges to cross over so you can go from one to the other. But let's talk about some of the top reasons. The top reasons about what? The top reasons that Vancouver is becoming practically number one on the list of places people are talking about. It's not a suburb of Portland, by the way. Remember, it's actually in a different state. And that river, it, it separates it in a big way. So the first thing I wanna talk about is that Housing in Vancouver seems to be offering more affordability. There are more houses in a variety of price ranges. So Portland, you know, 10 years ago used to be a place that people would move to and they thought, oh, it's very low cost and I get a good lifestyle there. I can have a lot of fun. There are a lot of restaurants and things to do. And housing was pretty well priced. You know, today what you see is a significant difference. Housing in Portland has gone up a lot over the last 10 years. It's not a place where you go to buy a $100,000 house anymore. Now, that's not to say that you're gonna find a $100,000 house in Vancouver, although there might be some land available and other things, but there's definitely a price difference. And along with that, the number of developments. So, like I said, the first issue is the pricing overall, but let's talk about number two. And that is the number of new developments in Vancouver, Washington. So if you don't know this, Portland is one of, if not the only city in the country to have something called an urban growth boundary. So that means they cannot keep building more and more unless they decide to change those rules. That's why you don't see so many new developments. Sometimes I could drive for miles and miles and miles through Portland and I don't see 
any new signs from developers. You'll see one or two new homes popping up or homes being highly remodeled. But it's not like going to Washington. In Washington, there are developers building lots of nice new houses with a huge array of sizes and pricing. And that's what I like. It gives options for everyone. So that, that thing that goes on in Portland, that urban growth boundary, has an effect on how much housing can be built. And of course, supply and demand do affect the prices of housing. Right? If there aren't new houses being built and there aren't houses available, what happens to the prices? Well, they go up. The supply is not enough to meet with the demand. But in Vancouver and the surrounding towns, you've got a lot of new development still going on. And I think that gives people some of the options that they need to find the place that's right for them. And you won't be disappointed if you live in Vancouver versus living in Portland, Oregon. Now, something we have to bring up, of course, is what we'll call item number three on the list. And that is, again, that Washington has no state income tax. So whenever I bring that up, some people say, I don't know if that's a big deal because Portland has no sales tax. Well, right, the state of Oregon doesn't have sales tax. But let's just do some basic math, okay? Let's say that you have two people in your family who bring income in. Then let's think about how much you actually spend when you go out. So let's say, for example, Washington has a variety of income of, I'm sorry, a variety of sales taxes because it can change by county. Let's say it ranges from six to 10%. Let's even say it's 10%. This is just an example. That might not be the exact number where you're looking. But if you spent $50,000 a year shopping, which is a lot. Okay, this is an extreme number I'm using. That would cost you $5,000 in sales tax. But if you're spending that much money, that means that you're earning probably way more than that. So you're actually having a net savings by not having income tax. In fact, I think 50,000 is a really high number. I mean, by the time you cover your groceries, maybe you wanna buy a computer, you buy a few different things, you're probably not spending anywhere near that. So let's just say you spend $10,000 a year on groceries, which might actually not even have sales tax. That's not a great example. Let's say you buy a computer, you buy clothing, you pick up some other things. Maybe you spend 5,000 or 10,000 a year and you had to pay 10% tax. Sure, so you spent an extra thousand dollars, but that's significantly less than the savings you'll get from not having an income tax. And states that don't have income tax are becoming more and more popular. So of course, let's hope it stays that way. It's been that way for a long time. And as of today, there's still no state income tax. So that's a major reason people consider Washington over Oregon. Okay, next, I wanna bring up the fact that the downtown has been revitalized. Okay, that's a big deal. Now, why is that a big deal? Here's the thing. A lot of people, when they talk about moving to Portland, they wanna move there because it's fun. The city has a lot of character and it has a lot of fun, cool neighborhoods. The neighborhoods, as I hear local ref refer to them as the neighborhoods, people just say, hey, do you wanna go to one of the neighborhoods? Those are usually like main streets or streets that have a lot of commerce and stores on them where you can go walking, you can go out to dinner, you can hit up some bars if you'd like to. Maybe you'll get ice cream at one of the famous local ice cream places like Salt and Straw. And they have a lot of these, okay? It's not just one little street. Sure, Portland has a downtown, Portland has the Pearl District, but outside of the, the core area of the city, you have a lot of neighborhoods, and those neighborhoods have a lot of fun things to do. But today, Vancouver has really revitalized the downtown. In fact, I was talking to some people there while I was walking on Main Street. I was making a video, which I'm gonna release soon. I wanna make sure that you get excited for it, like I am. And I was asking them, you know, how, how has it changed? And they said, oh my gosh, it's changed so much. We have so many new restaurants, we have bars, cafes, uh, there's some like event locations, you have the theaters, obviously you have new buildings. So you literally have new buildings that have popped up. And I think people go downtown for fun. I was there one Friday night and I did what I was talking about doing in Portland. I was in downtown Vancouver, I walked around, we went to one restaurant, then I went somewhere else, then I walked down to the water. It was great. And you have that now in Vancouver, Washington. You have 
the fun place to go. Now, sure, Vancouver has other places besides downtown. I mean, you have the shopping centers, you have other restaurants. There's a fish place I love over by uh, 205, the, the, the freeway bridge there by 205, a little bit closer to that side, further from downtown. Remember, downtown is west, and the other part of the city is to the east. So you have a lot of stuff there already, but now that the downtown has really been revitalized and new places are coming in, you have seating uh, on the sidewalks and you have some on the street, you have coffee shops. I saw people working on their laptops in coffee shops, you know, when the hipsters come, they, they order a coffee and they sit there and they're doing some kind of work or playing around on their computer. It's a different vibe. And the very first time I went to Vancouver, I didn't, I didn't feel that way, but now it's, it's totally different. And I think now people realize you can live in Vancouver or one of the suburbs and you can still have that much fun. You know, you don't even need to cross the river anymore. People told me, oh, in the past, I used to always go from Vancouver down to Portland because that's where the fun was. That's where the restaurants were. That's where the nightlife was. But today it's different. And on top of that, let's talk about the next important item, the waterfront region. The waterfront region is, is bringing a new level of entertainment and fun and a different type of culture too to that area. So remember the waterfront Vancouver is very close to downtown. You can walk there. Uh, if you're in the downtown neighborhood, you could walk there. Of course, it's a, a, just a very quick drive. And currently there was still ample parking. There wasn't even a problem parking on a Friday night, which again was surprising to me because later I had to get the car and I was thinking, oh, maybe I won't be able to find any parking. I should just keep walking. But no, it was incredibly convenient. So what the waterfront development is bringing is nice restaurants. And there are some very upscale restaurants, uh, one of which I went to. It was, it was, it was quite good. It had some, gosh, I, I, I wish I could just show you pictures of what I ate. I should have taken pictures of what I ate. Had a beautiful view of the water. Wow. But there are also some, what I like to call medium price restaurants. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to get dressed up. You can still eat along the water. You can enjoy the beautiful view of the Columbia River. There's just something about when the sun is glistening off the river. It's, oh, it's amazing. The reflection's really nice and you see the bridges. It's so relaxing. I love going there for happy hour snacks. Uh, and you know, these places, even though they're in a nice brand new neighborhood, they still have happy hour pricing on food. Not all of them, but some of them do. And it was so good. They also have wineries down there. Um, there's an, there are a few wineries, actually. There are multiple places where they brought different wineries into this neighborhood. And this is, again, right along the waterfront. You're not driving to a winery. You get to go to the tasting rooms right there. There's an ice cream place where they sell ice cream out of a window. It's like a, you know, they sell milkshakes, and like a soft serve type of ice cream. I like strawberry myself, but you might like a different flavor. So if you go down there, or someone from the team takes you down there when you're taking your tour of Vancouver, you might want to try a milkshake. But it's really bringing a cool vibe to the city because now you have, it has its own little scene. If you like the downtown scene, that's great too, because that'll give you enough to do but also the waterfront has its own scene with beautiful new buildings. And that's just something that shows the development and the amount of money that's going into bringing up the city. One question that I was thinking about and that somebody asked me was, well, can I live on the waterfront? And the answer is right now you can only choose from condos. And that makes sense, right? Because there's only so much waterfront area. So it's logical that they built condos. You can also get a, a home that's in walking distance, but it's gonna be an older home. Uh, I believe it's called the Huff area, H-O-U-G-H. -H. That's one neighborhood uh, you can check out. The team will be happy to show you that. So if, just as a reminder, if you are looking to live close to the waterfront or close to downtown and you wanna be able to walk somewhere, no problem, just let us know. You know, When you send us an email or text message, just, just throw that in there. I'd love to live somewhere walkable if available or it's a must have. You know, your lifestyle decision is gonna be really important. What, what lifestyle you're looking for. I always bring that up to people. Like for me, when I think about moving, I think about how am I improving my quality of life? So would relocating to Vancouver, Washington improve your quality of life? Well, I, I would hope so. There's a good chance that it would. And that's why you wanna move. 
But let's just talk about that one more time. If, if you do want to live somewhere walkable and you want to live on the waterfront in one of the newest buildings, you're probably going to have to live in a condo. Me, I think that's okay because I don't necessarily like yard maintenance and I, I enjoy condos. I think it's, it's nice to have things kind of taken care of for you. Maybe you get a gym on the premises, but that is one option as well as, you know, getting something walkable in a, in a traditional home. The next thing I do want to mention about the fun now of living in Vancouver is the new casino. Uh, the, the casino, which is not specifically close to downtown, it is off the 5 freeway. You can't miss it. It's a huge building. Uh, I, believe, I believe it's called a and And that's a new thing to do in the neighborhood too. So you can still stay on the Washington side of the Columbia River and you can enjoy the new casino if that's something that you enjoy. They also feature some restaurants in there. I know I bring up restaurants a lot and someone had said, wow, you talk about eating out a lot, but that's something that I find that people really enjoy doing. Maybe you want to celebrate. Maybe you're just happy it's Friday. Maybe you want to have date night on a Saturday. Maybe you're just hungry and don't feel like cooking, but having a lot of restaurants around with choices of different kinds of food is really fun. Me, when I go to a restaurant, I like to try to order something that I can't cook at home. So of course there are things I can make, and there are things that I can't. So that's why I bring up these restaurants. It's, it's just a, a source of recreation. But you do have that option there to go to the casino if it's something that you enjoy. And I do think they might be building a hotel there as well. I have seen some information about that. But if you're a local, that's not even gonna be something you need. It's pretty nice to have that convenient location. The next item I wanna to bring to your attention is the great suburbs of Vancouver, Washington. So you don't actually have to live in Vancouver. You have a lot of nice suburbs. You have Camas, which is one that I love. Camas has its own downtown Main Street style area where you have a lot of little stores, cutesy places. It's on multiple streets. It's fun just to stroll around there a little. But for housing, you have a lot of options in Camas. You of course have kind of a golf area. You can live by Lacamas Lake, which I recently uh, went hiking at and it was so cool. There were so many people who just appeared in the lake. I remember when I was I was driving over there because I wanted to go on a hike and I said, let's let's go over there. So I get to Lacamas Lake and I was surprised. I saw all these cars. I'm like, oh, so I'm not the only person who wants to go over here today. And then there were people in there stand up paddle boarding. They were just swimming around. People were swinging from a tree on a, this, you know, thing that you swing on. I, I guess a swing or like a tire or something like that. There are a lot of people just having fun over there. That's also in Camas. Camas gives you a huge range of houses. Okay, you can get something from a few hundred thousand to in the millions. I mean, multi-millions, you have a lot of options. If you wanna live along the Columbia River, you have options for some really gorgeous homes over there. There are a lot of new developments as well. There are some up on the hill, so they give you a really nice view. One of the key views to have if you can get it, if you can get a view house, is a view of Mount Hood or a view of the Columbia River, right? Water views tend to be very popular. I mean, who doesn't want to look at that? Obviously, there's no ocean right there, but the river is the desirable view for a lot of people. But you have more than just that. You also have Ridgefield, of course, which is going to be to the north. Next to Camas, uh, just as a reminder, we do have Washougal, Washington, which also has its own cute little downtown. It's got a little area where people walk around and they go out at night. And a really popular place that's coming up is Salmon Creek. Salmon Creek is gonna to be to the north. You see quite a few new developments up in Salmon Creek. New housing options, once again, where you could potentially purchase a brand new home or you can get a resale home that was built more recently. See, that's the thing I was talking about. In Portland, they have that restriction on building new homes. And that's why Washington, again, is becoming even more popular. Here's the cool thing. Wherever you choose, let's say you live in Washougal, you live in Camas, you're up in Ridgefield, the Salmon Creek area of Washington, or again, Vancouver. You don't have to cross the river. You can get everything you need and live your whole life in that area. You have all the fun you need, all the shopping, all the services, and there's not a lot of traffic. That's something that I can really appreciate because when I was younger, okay, when I was younger, just a quick story, 
I remember listening to the news in the car with my parents back when we would use like AM radio, and there'd be a traffic report every six minutes. You know, when you're up in the Pacific Northwest, especially on the Vancouver side, you don't have very much traffic at all. If you do have to commute into Portland for work, yeah, there will be some traffic. I mean, it's, it's gonna be a minimum of eight miles of driving. You're gonna have to go over a bridge, and there is traffic during rush hour. I've learned this the hard way because I might have been in Portland and someone said, hey, let's go to Vancouver for dinner. And silly me, I didn't think to realize that it would take me 40 minutes to go eight miles, but it can. But, well, think about what I just said. My friend said, let's go eat in Vancouver. Like he didn't want to go to dinner in Portland, even though Portland is filled with great restaurants. Portland is a foodie town. But if you live in Vancouver, you can just drive down and enjoy some of the food cart pods. You can enjoy all of these local restaurants, but you still get the benefit of living in Vancouver, having no state income tax, very little traffic, and you might be able to get a home that meets your needs better. Why do I say that? Because when you're in Portland and you're looking at homes, there's a good chance you're gonna find older homes. And a lot of the newer places I see are gonna be in the Pearl District, which means you'll have to live in a condo or a townhouse, and that's not what everyone wants to do. But just keep that in mind. You, you, you can live in Vancouver, pay no state income tax. You can go shopping in Portland, and they don't have sales tax, and you get all the fun of the city with the benefits of living in Vancouver instead. And I think once you move up there and once you look around, you'll see, wow, this has everything I need. This is great. I spend, I spent quite a bit of time there and I love that area. I love being by the downtown. I love the fact that there are new homes. I have been driving all around again in different neighborhoods. I love the lakes too and the outdoor activities. That's one thing I did not mention, but let's throw this in as a bonus. If you live in Vancouver or Portland, you are gonna get access to outdoor activities. You have Hood River, you have all these beautiful places on the coast. So whatever side you choose, you will get access to that. Uh, Vancouver definitely has enough hiking, biking, trails, and all those types of things. And I bring this stuff up because I find that people in the Northwest like to get outdoors. In fact, I saw a survey that said a large percentage of people consider outdoor activity as their main form of exercise. I would have thought they'd say going to the gym, but no, they were talking about going outdoors. And I know why, because it's beautiful. So I've actually been thinking, should I post some videos of my hikes? Do people wanna see that? Let me know in the comments below if you'd actually like to see some of my hikes. I've been videoing some of them and taking photographs because they just, they just, they blow my mind. I feel so relaxed when I get out there in the forest and when I see the trees and the beautiful light passing through it. So let me know. Now, what's most important, of course, is that you reach out to us, okay? Send us an email, send us a text message, give us a call because our team is here to help you when you're ready to relocate to Vancouver, Washington. If you wanna to move to Portland, Oregon, same thing. Reach out, get in touch. Everybody is excited about the Pacific Northwest and wants to help you with your move. So you have our contact information, and if you want, you can schedule a call by clicking the link down below. Or, like I said, send a text message, which I know is probably the most popular thing these days. Now, I would also love it if you were to like this video and tap that little subscribe button and click that little bell, because when I see that, it inspires me. I love reading your comments on the videos. I love. When I see a new subscriber, it just makes me want to make more videos and help everybody. All right, I can't wait to talk to some of you personally and get in touch and learn all about what you want to do. We'll see you soon in the next video, everyone. Take care.